Hello, everybody. Jose Rodriguez here. Let me quench my throat a little bit. Mm. I'm going to be doing three videos this week. It's not Wednesday, a little bit late in the week. I haven't been feeling too well earlier this week, so I've taken a little break, and uh, Nathan and family, we're going to go to the beach, but the whole week is a washout. It's been raining pretty much daily, so they decided to cancel. They, yeah, they lost some money in the process, but they are at home, so I went to visit them the other day. And anyway, uh, as a result of all, all of this rain, I realized that I need new gutter system installed, so that's another big expense that I got to deal with probably this coming week. Anyway, this video that I'm going to be doing using all of this material right here is going to cover and talk about a mistake that's quite fatal, not terminal, but it can be a real pain in the you know what if you commit that mistake, okay? In the early days of printers with just CMYK, this wasn't really much of a problem, but now that we have very sophisticated printers with, you know, up to 12 colors, it could sneak up and bite you in the you know what. But anyway, that's gonna come later on this week. Today I'm gonna talk about, oh, by the way, will you take a look at that? This is my kid, my son-in-law, my baby grandson right here at Disney World. This is printed on glass, folks. I know it looks just like a frame over a picture. No, that's actually directly printed on glass. And of course, using sublimation. And I'm gonna show you in the very next video after this one, some of my new results that I have obtained myself coding. I know I should wait until I do my series, but I just cannot wait to share this with you. And the next video in the series for sublimation is where I'm gonna show you all of the products that I now have from Condi Systems. And they're quite beautiful and quite creative in what can be done with sublimation and the myriad of products that you can get into producing and personalizing for customers, selling at local shops. Yeah, it can be done. All right, so this is just gonna be three questions, three answers or solutions. Someone realized that one of their printers, this was a Canon, produced a blank nozzle check. Uh oh, panic sets in, of course, I hope you realize that problem before you actually print it an image. Because if you're printing an image with a channel that's dry, you can guess what's gonna to happen to that particular channel. It's gonna overheat and more than likely be permanently damaged. Often, if you're just doing your nozzle checks periodically before every important print job, you can avert that problem by seeing right off the bat and by the way, an also check will do no harm to the printer. You can see whether a channel is not producing a complete nozzle check and therefore, you know, possibly be suffering from ink flow problems or, well, I'll tell you at the end. So here's what happened. The nozzle check for a color was pretty much blank. Cleaning cycles were done. Nozzle checks were then repeated. There was some improvement. And long story short, at the end, there's really no improvement whatsoever. It pretty much went blank. So the idea immediately comes in that, oh, I need to take my printhead out and perform one of these um, printhead washes that are shown on some YouTube videos. And if you don't do that perfectly correct, you can cause more damage. In fact, permanent damage. You might as well just have a brand new printhead waiting on the aisles. Otherwise, it's usually going to maybe work, but most of the time it doesn't work. And at the end, of course, my thought immediately is, did you check your cart, that particular channel? Oh no, the cart is fine. Did you check the cart? Oh no, the cart is, f listen, did you check your cart? Weigh it. You better know what the empty weight of a cart is. And you better know what the full weight of a cart is. So, of course, you guessed it. That cart was empty. So, they are not refilling. They may be refilling. So, what you need to do at that point is immediately either have a spare waiting, 
replace that and hope for the best. Let it do a purge. Hopefully it'll reprime that channel and then your next nozzle check should be pretty much perfect unless you cause damage. So that is my advice. If you see sudden drops in the nozzle check percentage wise, say a channel was working perfectly the day before and please, please, please run a nozzle check as often as possible, okay? This will save you. It will save your hide and your print head many times because often people just don't keep track of their ink levels. Imagine that the cart was empty and the person did not realize it. So that is what you need to do. And then if you're refilling, make sure that before the cart is declared empty, although the uh, Pro 100 should be refilled at low, so you still have a saturated sponge. The Pro 10, you can allow it to go empty, but when the chip says empty, is the cart beyond empty? Or does the cart have a little bit of ink left in it? We don't know. I can test that someday. I will check it and see if there's actually any ink left. But really, it's just simply easier to just reset the whole kit and caboodle. Have two sets of carts, folks. This is imperative that most of you guys who use Canon printers and choose to refill, you better have two sets of carts, at least for the Pro 10 and the Pro 100. Not the Pro 1, not the Pro 1000. No need to do that because you cannot reset all of the cartridges. You have to rely on those single-use chips. On the Pro 10, yeah, you can reset the whole 10. On the Pro 100, you can reset all eight carts. And then you just remove that set with either a low or almost empty cart, as in the case of the Pro 10, and replace the whole thing. Yeah, I'm getting tired of all these ink purges after each cartridge change. You know, I have a cart that's low and now it's empty because the one that I replaced cost an ink purge and it's just continually changing cartridges and it costs a lot of money. Yes, it does. So please consider refilling with top quality inks. You know what those are? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna advertise for anyone tonight. So do the complete set of carts at one time. That will get you to the point even better than when you initiated the printer because you no longer have to prime the whole ink system. You can just run a small ink purge, which will happen automatically, and begin to print with full 100%, well, 99% full cartridges. Print for a month, two months even, until one of those cartridges reaches low or almost empty for the Pro 10 and low for the Pro 100. Again, remove that whole set. Many of the other cartridges will be partially filled at different levels, okay? They'll have different levels. And you will then reset the whole thing, top them all off, put it on the shelf, waiting for the next time. Meanwhile, you have already reinstalled the second set. And you go back, set A, set B, set A, set B. You will reduce your purge cycles. Now, don't worry so much about the ink pads. Apparently, they're pretty huge. But worry about wasting ink, okay? Every time you do the single cart swap, it just runs a global ink purge. And again, even if it's just a couple of ml total, it's very wasteful. So, you know, choose to always have that second set nearby. I've been working on the Pro 100 for five years with just two sets of original cartridges. All right, the second question was this. You may have a printer that develops what you see on the nozzle check as a, maybe a partial problem several of the nozzles are not printing. You run a cleaning cycle, which is the customary thing to do, and now you have different nozzles not firing, okay? Some of the ones that were fine are now not firing, and some of the ones that were not fine all of a sudden are firing. What the heck is going on? I cannot really get a clean 100% firing channel for say cyan or yellow, whatever. You continue wasting ink by performing all of these cleaning cycles and nothing seems to help. When was the last time you cleaned the gasket on your purge unit or the parking station? You might say, what are you talking about? Yeah, that's just something they won't tell you about. And what they do is they want you to have these problems so you consider buying a new printer. 
But the way to keep a printer working, and I did this with my 3800, and I got a video where I talked about that. You need to clean that gasket. Think of it as a rectangular unit, about yay big, with a peripheral gasket, very soft silicone. And it seals against the nozzle plate, which is also rectangular. That seal allows the pump to create that first little pulse of vacuum. Ink is sucked out of it physically, and then the printhead detaches, moves over to the side, and that's when you hear that whirling sound. That's the peristaltic pump working. Did I say that right? And that's the sound you hear. That's not the cleaning cycle. That's just the pump emptying out the ink that it collected silently. When it's collecting the ink from your printhead, it is silent. When it's making all those noises, the printhead has already detached itself and is now emptying out the perch pad. Now, if you do not have a seal because you have gunk and, okay, for lack of a better word, crap all over the surface of that gasket, you're not going to be able to develop the perfect seal, which then means you have no vacuum. So you can clean all you want. It's not going to suck any ink out of the printhead. Worse, it's going to allow air to reinfiltrate the channels. And it's going to look like, of course, it's blank because air doesn't print, right? So you need to make sure that you systematically, every couple of months, with a long Q-tip, get one of those long Q-tips, reach in there. After you have done the trick of uh, starting up the printer from the wall, as soon as the printhead detaches, pull the plug out, move it aside. That works beautifully with Epson printers. I have not done it yet with a Canon printer, but with Epson printers, this seems to be a big problem. So detach the printhead, pull the plug, move the printhead assembly to the left, and then you can reach that peripheral gasket, clean it with Windex or whatever, or just plain water, uh, distilled water or something of that nature. Make sure that it is nice and clean. Also do the wiper blade. You might have to actually manually move it to be able to clean it. But make sure that gasket is not damaged, it's not cracked. If it's cracked, that's it. You just basically need a new perch unit. Most people will just go ahead and buy a new printer at this point. So that is it. Once you keep that gasket clean, it will be able to seal against the nozzle plate. And the very next cleaning cycle you perform will have produced full vacuum, which means that whatever air was present, as long as you don't have a true clog, if it's just air, at that point, it will suck that air out, you'll have ink, and your nozzle check should be 100%, okay? So that's something to keep in mind. Again, a lot of people don't even know about that. So again, look on YouTube, not just my videos, but there are many videos also done by uh, Inkjet Mall, which actually tells you step-by-step step how to maintain a 3800 and some other printer, I believe, that they use. All right, the last one, and we'll stop because we don't want to make this too tiresome for everyone. Somebody commented about the P800, and of course, when you get it, you have your OEM carts, and everybody wants to go ahead and perform that switch over to third-party systems for the P800. Well, if you're in Europe and you don't have that brand new firmware, you could do that. The recommendation, of course, originally when the cartridges that everyone is using throughout the whole world came out, the recommendation was to begin to use those as soon as all of your cartridges are around 50%. Some people say about a third from empty, but I like to keep it at about 50%. I took mine out, I installed my cartridges refilled with Precision Colors PC K3 HD inks, wonderful inks, and proceeded to print. Little did I know that I wasn't going to be able to reset any of those cartridges. The reason you guys already know about. In Europe, they're not affected yet. In the Orient, they're not affected yet. And so they will be able to reset those. Now, the reason people say keep those original OEM cartridges is, what if you have to take your printer in for servicing? You want to have original cartridges in it. Yeah, you know what? Most technicians probably will not look, okay? But the information, in other words, remember I told you that all of these refillable cartridges are sharing the same ID color numbers or serial numbers or codes 
for every single yellow card, every single magenta card, every single light magenta, and down the line all the way to black. They're all identical, so they are all going to be recorded in that printer's memory, and guess who can access that information? The technician can access that information. So whether he feels like doing it or not, or cares, maybe all he cares about is just making money fixing your printer. He may not look, but he can indeed look. The person who suggested this said that this will keep them from knowing that you use third-party ink systems. No, it will not. It will certainly not keep them from finding out that you have actually used a third-party system. That information is recorded in the printer's memory. The next set of cartridges that you buy, OEM, those new numbers will be recorded in the printer's memory. So all of that information is indeed accessible at the repair center if they care to look. All right, that is it. I hope you enjoyed this three quickies. I hope it didn't take too long. The next video that I'm gonna do is gonna be, of course, no, I'm not gonna do this yet. I'm gonna show you what I've been doing the last few days. You're gonna love this. So as always, don't forget to share, subscribe, and like. And until the next time, happy printing, everybody. Bye-bye.